Hey guys, this is Heather from HealthyEatingStartsHere.com. I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little bit dark in my apartment today because the sun is not out and shining. It's a cloudy day. It's getting to be winter. Things are getting darker. The sun is rising later. Um, this is the time of year when it's really easy to start feeling kind of blah. It's cold out. You gotta bundle up. Um, you can also have a lot of fun in the winter, but a lot of the time people will find their energy levels, their mood kind of dipping. And for the most part, that's just your average winter blues. But for some people, it can actually cause some real issues. Um, there's something called seasonal affective disorder. The acronym is SAD, S-A-D. Um, and that's kind of the most full-blown um, consequence of low sunlight in the winter but um, you can have anywhere in between too so you might not be quite at the at the level of sad but you could have some low hormone levels some kind of vitamin imbalance and the most common thing with seasonal um, moodiness is a lack of vitamin D because Vitamin D is produced in our skin when we're exposed to the sun. With lower time that the sun is out, with um, the sun being at a lower level in the sky, it's not as intense. And, well, it's cold out, so I'm not running around in a bikini outside. Um, so there's less of my skin that's gonna be exposed to the sun. All of those things add up to the fact that we're not getting as much sunshine, so we're not getting as much natural vitamin D produced in our bodies. So, this is a good time of year to either start supplementing with vitamin D or to increase your vitamin D supplement. The RDA was recently increased by the US government from 400 IU to 600 IU, and a lot of health experts still think that that's pretty low. It's the amount that you'd need to prevent a severe deficiency but it might not be enough for optimum health levels and vitamin D is really really closely related with the hormone system in your body some people actually call vitamin D a hormone itself because it acts really closely in that system so if you don't have enough you might be finding yourself feeling moody maybe you're really really tired all of a sudden or you just feel like you have very low energy levels through the day now, you can take too much vitamin D when you take it from a supplement, that is possible, but you have to get up to the pretty high levels in order to get too much. Uh, about one to 2,000 IU a day seems to be pretty good for most people. I actually saw one study where they showed that 4,000 IU a day was safe for most people. So what I do is I stick with 1,000 through the summer and 2,000 through the winter. What you do is up to you, of course, um, and I can't really recommend a specific amount for a specific person because everyone needs it differently. The only way to tell for sure is actually to take a blood test once you've been taking supplements and see where your vitamin D level is in your blood. Now the quality of supplement that you take can make a huge difference. You might find a cheap bottle but you won't get your money's worth out of it unless you're actually using that vitamin. So you want to get the most active form and there are two active forms for vitamin D. Uh, one is cholecalciferol. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that cor correctly, but you can find the spelling in my article over at healthyeatingstartshere.com. That is the D3 form of the vitamin and that is sourced from the lanolin in sheep's wool. So it is sourced from animals. For vegans, you would want to go with the D2 form, which is ergocalciferol. And that is, they've shown it to be just as active when your levels of vitamin D are adequate, so it can maintain just as effectively. What they've seen is that if you have a deficiency of vitamin D, then D3 is more effective, but there is a new source of vegan D3 that I haven't tried out yet, but it looks pretty interesting. So uh, that is promising for vegans who have vitamin D deficiency and getting caught up. 
Um, there's also fortified foods. A lot of people don't like to take supplements and prefer to get vitamins from foods. Unfortunately for plant foods, the only way to do that is through fortified foods, which are just supplements added to things like milk or cereal. So personally, I prefer to choose my own supplements rather than getting it added by the food company, but it's up to you. If that's the best way for you to take it, then it's better than nothing. And um, even with animal foods that have vitamin D, the levels aren't that high. So um, supplements are a good idea for anyone, regardless of, uh, of what you eat. It's a difficult vitamin to get through your diet. And that's why most of the time we get it from the sun, but in the winter when it's cloudy, gray, not so easy. All right, guys, that's it for me today. I'd love to hear from you and whether you supplement through the winter with some vitamin D. I have uh, the supplements that I think are the highest quality posted uh, on my article. If you head over to healthyeatingstartsyear.com and try to smile. That really helps through the winter. Spend some time with some fun people and look forward to Christmas and go out and, I don't know, get a nice cup of hot apple cider.